So today we have PCBs that have been delivered. Now I purchased the ones from JLC PCB and PCB Way kindly provided these ones at no cost for a very good reason, I think. It's very kind of them. Um, so we'll jump straight into the PCB Way ones and then we'll look at the JLC. So the PCB Way ones, PCB Way ones, um, come in a lovely Christmas box, but um, I contacted them because I wanted to make something special for this month. So June this year is Pride Month, World Pride Month, I believe. Uh, it's not actually celebrated in the UK until sometime in August, I think, but or observed, I'm not sure what you'd say. So I thought we would make something. And so I ordered a bunch of different colored PCBs. Now the pride flag is a number of different colors. It's green, red, blue, purple, orange, and yellow. And you can't get all those colors. You can get a lot of them. So I've got blue, I've got red. We'll go into these in a minute, we'll open them up. Um, I've got no solder mask. I've got white. We might be doing some painting. Uh, I've got green. This is meant to be yellow, but it looks a bit more orange to me. And we've got purple and a pen. Some stickers as well, apparently. So lots of different colors here. So let's get one of these open. I'll show you what the design is. Let's choose the orange one here. Might need to break this knife. It looks uh, looks like it's not really very sharp anymore. There we go. So they're essentially just color bands with LEDs on them. Now they might be side mounted LEDs. I'm not sure yet, but on the back, we've got a bus bar. So we've got a negative connection here and a positive, which is this side and then negative goes over to this side. And it's just got, I just put a little heart on there. So essentially they'll stack like this, all the different colors together and produce a kind of flag. But there is a problem. We don't have orange. And while this does look quite orange, I have to admit, um, we're going to need to change that. In fact, we could use that as orange and then make a separate yellow PCB. And so because of that, I picked up something else. There we go. I picked up some UV curable solder mask. Now this one is yellow. It looks kind of the same color as this one. Um, I picked up some white so that we can, although there's some weird colors in there, maybe that's, maybe that needs sort of mixing up a little bit. And I picked up some red. So we can definitely make orange with the red and the yellow. And we've got white here. So we might be able to uh, sort of make this a bit brighter maybe. And then that might serve as our yellow and we can use this one as orange. But we'll see, we'll play around with it. That is why I've bought some white ones. Not only, that's not the only reason I brought white ones, but uh, what I should have done is ordered black ones, but I didn't. Um, so we're gonna make black and brown ones as well, because there's a, a new flag with that on. I didn't know that until I, <laughs> until I went to look it up. Um, so we'll do that, but we may also try and use these, which have no solder mask on them at all. So they're kind of interesting. So we'll give that a go. I also purchased a, a light to cure these because you need to use UV light. In fact, I'm going to put these back in the bag because they might cure in here. I don't really know how this works, but um, I purchased a light. They're kind of expensive, but I found a cheaper alternative. And that alternative is this. It is a money detector. So this is the kind of thing that you use to look and see if your currency is <laughs> fraudulent. So let's turn it on and see what the camera sees. Not an awful lot. You can just see this slight glow there, but I do have something that will show up. Let's just pop it there for a second. I wonder if this camera's going to decide to focus. So let, oh, there we go, it has. So I've got some UV 
not UV, it's glow in the dark powder, but um, basically it will absorb the uh, energy from UV and glow. I've probably got some money somewhere. Let's see if I can find something. There we go. I've got a 10 pound note here and can't really see much, but if I pop it under here, you can see that it says 10 just there. So this is a money detector. And I'm hoping it will work for curing solder mask. And the reason I bought it was because it was about five pounds delivered, which is a darn sight cheaper than the, like the UV torches and lamps that you can buy. Because this one has a specific purpose and isn't marketed as something that's going to be used for, I don't know, looking for stains and things, which is like a lot of those torches and things are advertised for that. This one's got a very specific purpose, but it has a four watt bulb inside. So should be good. We'll see. Anyway, I'll pop a link in the description for this and for the, the little solder mask things so that if you fancy having a go, then you, you can. I'm going to be trying this at some point very soon. I've got a couple of days coming off, coming up off work, so I'll probably try it then. But if any of you've got experience with it, then please do let me know. I've looked at a couple of tutorials online, so I think we'll just go for it and give it a go. All right, next up. So next up is the JLC PTB Ooh. <laughs> box. Let's have a look what we got in here. Ah, so this is, I've already opened this. I'm not sure why I'm pretending like I haven't seen it. This is the milliseconds clock board. This is the largest PCB I've ever produced. So I'm really excited about it. Um, we are going to open it now and have a little look because I created my own footprint and cutout for these uh, seven segment displays. And I want to see if they fit in there. I mean, if they don't, I'm going to have to respin it. I can't, <laughs> I can't force them in somehow. Might be able to file down the edges a little if it doesn't fit. You also get um, some electrical tape in here, it seems. DIY PCB like caveman. No, <laughs> I'm not advertising them. Um, so let's pull this out and have a little look. Oh, incidentally, let me show you what this comes from. So this comes from this project, which was the milliseconds clock project. If you haven't seen it, let's power it up so you can see it go. Oh, I've unplugged that. Hang on. So let's power this sucker up so you can have a look at what it does. I'm sure if you've watched any recent ones, you'll have seen this thing, but essentially we've got, <laughs> I mean, you can't really see it um, because of all these wires in the way, but um, we've got a clock that counts in milliseconds. So you can see there's the seconds counting there. Oops. <laughs> I think my breadboard connection is a bit janky here. And that's the why I've spun up a PCB. Come on now. There we go. So I spun up these PCBs. Spun up. I don't know where I picked that up. I think James Sharman said it and now it's in my head. So let's open them up. I'll get this out of the way actually. So let's open this. So this is the front of the PCB just here. See if we can't, uh... there we go. So we've got um, touch bits here. I don't know if they're going to work. This is like, oh my God, it looks so cool. So um, we've got a thing for, oh, look at that. Oh no, it's not on the PCB. <laughs> That's okay. So we've got uh, a little touch bit for hours and minutes. That's to increment them. We've got, uh, display on off, reset and start stop. I think maybe the reset button could have been smaller. Um, maybe it would have been better off being this one here. So because you don't really want to press it by accident. And then there's only one LED on the front. And I had to do that because KiCad had this weird behavior. It wouldn't generate the solder mask if there were no components on the front side of the board. So it wouldn't create um, Gerbers for me that I could use. Um, and you'll notice that I've put the the little colons here and the decimal point as solder mask or silk screen rather. And that's because I don't want to run the LED dots. And plus there's no dots on the, uh, the displays that I bought. Now these displays aren't through hole. 
So, although I don't know, maybe it'll fit. It might be the same size. Let's have a look. No, not the same size. So those don't fit. But uh, I'm not using through hole seven segment displays. I've bought some from LCSC, which are SMD. Um, and that's why it's a bit of an experiment because I created the part for it and made it in KiCad. In fact, I learned to use KiCad just so that I could make this board because it was too large for the, the free Eagle version. Um, I have since got a license for the full Eagle version, but I figured since I've started using KiCad, I don't really know where Eagle's going in terms of its um, subscription model. So I'm going to stick with KiCad for now, and that looks quite nice. So they're SMD seven segment displays. Let's pull them out of my LCSC order and have a look. Now, this board is huge. Like, there's so many components on here, it's almost ridiculous. So this board alone has, well, there's one LED on the front, but it's got 69 resistors. There are eight seven segment displays. There are eight 4026s to drive them. Um, there's touch sensors, the TTP233. I think there are five of those. There are 21 capacitors on here. There are like seven diodes. There's a crystal, there's a 4060, a 4017, and a 4073. And I'm probably missing something. Oh, and a USB over here. So as it's, it's expensive. <laughs> so I've had to make some purchases. So I've done an LCSC order. I've done a Mauser order and another order that I can't remember where it came from. But here are the displays. And this is the thing I'm mostly concerned about is whether it's going to fit in there. So these are nicely packaged up. They're looking to be about the right size. Should we come a little closer? And we'll just take one for now. Please fit. Oh my God, they fit. <laughs> so, that's what they're going to look like. They stand off the board a little bit, but that's okay. I'm fine with that. Freaking hell, that looks cool. Oh, yes. Thank you. Look at that. So hopefully that will be okay. The good there's a, I have to be careful when placing these down so that I don't, um, you gonna focus there. Yeah, there you go. Um, there's not a lot of space between those pads, so I'm going to have to be quite frugal with the solder. Now, what I did to create these pads was um, I took the front side of the board like that. So the, the data sheet for this display had all of the, the labels like this. So ordinarily, it would be on top of the board like that but I didn't want to do that. So what I did was just route the board normally, route the board, design the, the part normally, and then just say that the pads were on the bottom. And so that meant if I just turn it over, it should be mirrored or not mirrored rather. <laughs> oh, that's going to look all right. Oh, I'm fairly happy with that. So that is pretty much everything apart from all of the components. I've got some here from uh, Mauser. And I even bought some of these for another project. These are, these are actually really interesting. And I, something I've never seen before. They are, there we go. These are surface mount six pin. What are these called? Like headers or something? Um, anyway, I want to do some um, reprogram of 80 tiny 85s in a project and I need something to do the uh, ICSP header. And I found these and I thought, wow, that's great. I don't want something going through the board. So I want it to be surface mount and that is ideal. So this is shaping up to probably be my most expensive board. Um, not, not really the PCB cost, although these were probably about three pounds if you count everything like together. Um, with postage and that. But um, it's interesting because these boards, I didn't order a matte black, but it is quite matte. Like you can see a slight sheen on it. 
but um, it's definitely matte. So I don't know whether they changed it or not, but I'm fairly sure I ordered just black, but it is fairly, fairly matte. Um, but the real expense here, the actual cost comes in the form of the components. So these LED displays, just for one board alone, for, for eight displays is four pounds 50 for just those LED displays. And then, you know, there's extra cost on top of that because you've got the chips to drive the displays. So the 4026 is along here, they're pretty pricey as well. So for eight of those, it's about two pound 50. Um, so yeah, things start racking up and then you've got like 40 pence for the USB, something like that. Um, and I had to go, I didn't have to, but I wanted to go for one which um, didn't have, oh, come on now, please. <laughs> it's not going to focus, but I want, oh, there we go. I wanted to have one that didn't have any holes in it. So it didn't protrude through the board. Um, I wanted the board, front of the board to look super clean and it does, despite having to stick that LED on there. So I had to get a specific part and I think it's um, a Molex one. So yeah, everything is shaping up to be pretty expensive, but that's okay. I'm having fun. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot. I'll speak to you all again soon.